Aquarius, welcome to the Temple of Consciousness. My name is Ava. I would like to be your oracle and spiritual guide for the month of October 2024. This is an astro tarot forecast combining the two mystical arts to give you a better view into the immediate future. And again, this is relevant to you if your sun sign, your moon sign, or your rising sign is Aquarius. I have Venus in Aquarius. My father was an Aquarian. So I very much, and my several of my best friends have been Aquarius. I get along tremendously well with Aquarius. I just noticed it. There was a card in there from last reading. So what I do um, is I try to keep things very simple and direct. So we follow the transits of only two planets, uh, Mars and Venus, because they put us into the more current events of the month. Um, and then after that, we will explore the future through a simple tarot card reading involving only four positions. And the two mystical arts communicate with one another. They speak to each other and they help um, create a more insightful story for us. Let's begin with the transit of Mars. And what is Mars? Mars, known to the ancients as the god of war, transits each house for 40 days and symbolizes aggressive forward-moving energy, passionate energy. Which house is Mars energizing this month? So Aquarius, Mars is in Cancer. And if we look at your um, sign, here it is, Aquarius, the water bearer. And that would make it the first house. So one, Pisces two, Aries three, Taurus four, Gemini five, Cancer, your sixth house of work, of health and well-being. So your focus is going to be on your work. That kind of work that involves physical, intellectual labor. Uh, it's very kind of karmic work in that you reap what you sow. And with Mars here, um, you will be working very, very hard, diligently, enthusiastically. There's something exciting about work as well with Mars here. And if it's about your health, you're going to be putting a lot of energy into uh, renewal health and vitality renewal. This might mean you up your exercise regime, clean up your diet, put a lot of time and effort into uh, physical self-improvement. So that is the Mars contribution to the month. So let's now look at the transit of Venus. And what is Venus? Venus, the planet of love, symbolizing pleasure, beauty, compassion, peace, wealth. Venus transits about five weeks in each sign. Where 
is your Venus this month. So now Venus transits two signs, two houses this month. So your Venus or our Venus, everyone's Venus <laughs> is in Scorpio for the first half of the month, Aquarius. And for you, your Scorpio is right here. So we count. Aquarius is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Your tenth house. You have Venus in your tenth house. This is an absolutely beautiful placement for your house of career and reputation. Maybe you get a break of some kind. Maybe an opportunity comes that furthers your career ambitions and increases your uh, popularity and reputation within your profession. This also means that your professional environment, the people you meet, the people you contract with, are uh, very amiable. Things go very well. They are harmonic. There are harmonic alignments. Very good for your career. Now, it then moves into the 11th house, Sagittarius, for the second half of the month. And this is another beautiful thing because the 11th house is about your community, your friend groups, your social circle. And again, you create um, harmonic relationships. You find beautiful new friendships. And you revel in the friendships that you already have. You join groups that are aligned with your values. You find friendships that also align with your values. And again, your reputation becomes something that precedes you. Thinking very positively, of course. You are very, very popular this month, Aquarius. Now, finally, what I want to end our astrological forecast with is the solar eclipse that happens in Libra. And that happens right here. Just before the 10th is the 9th house, Libra. And when you have a solar eclipse in this house, it, it's a very powerful placement for it. It literally is asking you to broaden your physical and intellectual, spiritual horizons. To get out of whatever rut you've fallen into, if you have. This is about exploring the more unfamiliar, however that might play out for you. Buy that ticket to Istanbul <laughs> or buy that exotic book on pyramids. Get out of your box, your safe zone. Do something that puts you in a little bit more risk, a risk on move of some sort. Shake it up. That's what the solar eclipse is asking you to do this month, Aquarius. That ought not to be a, a, a difficult task for an Aquarian. They're always looking for a way to get out of the doldrums. So that is your astrological forecast for the month. 
And now let's move into your tarot forecast. So give me a moment to uh, shuffle and to thank you for your viewership and to thank you for helping me to uh, alert the algorithms, the little internet fairies, that I'm back. <laughs> uh, I was gone for about six months. I have had this channel for eight years though, so I was a little hiatus trying something new out that uh, didn't actually work out, but I'm very glad to be back and doing these readings in a brand new way, including the astrological aspects of the month in a more defined and uh, specific way, and that's what I wanted to do. So, thank you for uh, whatever support you can give. You can buy me a chai or uh, if you like the reading, of course, or if you would like a per private, personal reading from me, there's a link below. GrandCentralHealing.com is where you go, and you'll see a whole plethora of uh, reading choices for your specific need. So let's cut and proceed. This is a four-card spread. The first card represents... The overall, there we go, the overall energy, energetic theme of the month. Beautiful, the sun. The sun. Primarily, this is about freedom. And we were just speaking in the astrological forecast about the solar eclipse in your ninth house, which was about setting yourself free. Here you set yourself free from the darkness. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. And you're feeling good. You have overcome a dark spell and you're coming into the light into joy it asks you to recapture your inner child to just have some fun to let your hair down do not be so serious. Laughter is medicine. Children can be medicine. Their joy, their sense of spontaneity is what you need. You need to be spontaneous and joyful and grateful for the dawning of the light. That is the overall mood or energy of the month. Beautiful. And in the position of what will challenge you, we have the three of pentacles. This is Mars in Capricorn. Mars in Capricorn. Your 12th house, Mars in your 12th house. So, it's about the challenges of doing something collaboratively. This is the recognition of hierarchy as well. True hierarchy. Finding your place within a work group or any other kind of group, social circle. Again, we've got Venus in your 
uh, 10th house and 11th house. And the 11th house is about friendship. Venus is in the house of friendship. So this might be your challenge is to forge creative relationships to create something that is um, of service, will be of service to the other. Serving your community. How can you do this effectively? And with being able to produce, this is Mars and Capricorn. Mars and Capricorn is very pragmatic. It's concerned with production, with utility, with pragmatism, incorporating all those qualities while you find your place within a community or within a group or a social circle or a group circle. That is your challenge, Aquarius. Let's see now what is what falls in your position of the unexpected. Wow, okay, the five of cups. The five of cups. Mars and Scorpio. We have Venus and Scorpio. Venus, again, being in your 10th house of profession, your work, your social standing, your relationships, your how you are viewed in your community. And there's some feeling of loss here. Perhaps you are disappointed about some... Uh, emotional connection that didn't happen or that you had counted on and it panned out differently than you had expected. This is about being appreciative of what you have. The sun indicates that you have been through a previous dark period. where you felt you perhaps did lose something or you felt an emotional emotional pain or loss of some kind. And being that it falls into your 10th house, it might be about your social standing, perhaps some, some friend uh, or uh, loss of your hierarchical position within a group. Yeah, perhaps you get demoted in some way from being treasurer to being, I don't know, uh, whatever the, whatever is below that realm. So it's about losing something within your career environment if it has a correlation astrologically to your 10th house. Generally, it could just be this still lingering feeling of loss uh, from what you've already been through, that darkness that had taken something from you. And you're still feeling that. You're still going through the emotional learning period. Where you have to accept the loss, whatever that may have been for you, an emotional loss. And turn around and notice what you have. How much you still have and value that. So that is the position of the unexpected. And let's see how all this concludes. More work. Oh, it's a it's a work month. It's a month of career building. Building. 
engineering. This is the card of the builder and the engineer. This is sun in Virgo. We've got a lot of earth in the tarot part of this forecast, meaning that you need time and patience to develop something. Patience is the key. You need to pay attention to details, to make adjustments, to adapt to your circumstances, and to have to primarily stay true to your values and your beliefs. Perhaps there's a new uh, business contracts coming in, but your workload is pretty heavy. So parse, parcel out your energy. There's a, a craving for you to go beyond the borders of your normal experiences this month. So do your work diligently. And I suggest doing something really somewhat exotic to fill that uh, internal need for growth and expansion, that need to be free. So that is your forecast for the month of October 2024. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next month and thank you for your support. Namaste.